This is Radar for On The Radar Tape Blog, coming to you with the Week 19 Hot Stove Edition Part 2. As we mentioned, lockout ended, all the moves are coming in. So there's so many moves that I couldn't all do to one. And with football, I had to do two podcasts. So here we go with more baseball. Phillies, with all the moves they made, they DFA'd Scott Moss. Cubs picked up Chris Martin and Daniel and David Robertson. Those are both great moves because both of them have been majorly closers. Robertson has more of a track record after pitching for Team USA in the race to rebuild his value after the injury to the Philly. Even if the Cubs to make the playoffs, they could flip both of these veterans to teams that need relievers, and the Cubs are actually trying. Dodgers re-signed Jimmy Nelson. Again, if he's healthy, he can be a starter or, or a reliever. Angels picked up Austin Romine after re-signing Kurt Suzuki, so they're trying to solidify catching. Chris Owen signed a Miley deal with the Orioles. They have no set infield because Rudin Adore the only guy in the major league roster that has all the experience. They have a few guys in minor league deals and a few inexperienced players, but in the end, Chris Owens, if he doesn't make the team the starter, he could play the outfield. He'll be a super utility guy there. The Yankees signed Phillip Evans after signing Ronald Guzman. The problem with both of them are their first baseman, DHs, and maybe occasional corner outfielder or third baseman. But the Yankees are full of those guys. So they're both probably not going to play at the major league roster. Diamondbacks picked up Grayson Reiner on a minor league deal. Dalton Varsho made DH, but even then, with him and Carson Kelly, I don't see any playing time for Grayson Griner, but that's good organizational depth, third string catcher. Again, another guy the Sox could have signed a minor league deal. Cardinals signed Zach McAllister in a minor league deal. The thing about Zach McAllister is when he was healthy with the Indians, he was a very good setup man. Cardinals, if he's healthy, that'll be a good reliever. It's like the Phillies picking up Dylan Maples on a minor league deal. He's been a major league year with the Phillies bullpen was bad last year. Zach Roscup to the Astros in a minor league deal. They're trying to get some extra reliever. If he's healthy, that's good. The Astros then DFA Hiro Soli. Pirates picked up Heath Emery. Again, veteran relief pitcher. If you're not going anywhere, you can flip him. Daniel Vogelbach with Colin Moran gone and the fact that there's a DH in the National League. Vogelbach could do one or the other, had 35 home runs. And again, you could always flip him. Mets signed Mike Montgomery, minor league deal. They got a solid rotation at a pretty good bullpen, but again, organizational depth is a swing guy as well. Mike Ford liked Steven Souza. I don't know why they signed with Seattle. Seattle has too many corner outfielders, corner infielders, and DHs with the trades they've made. There's no room for them, so that's again, it's stuck in AAA. Rays re signed Cody Reed to a minor league deal. He's going to definitely pitch for them out of bullpen. They just wanted to be cheaper. Braves picked up Kyle McHugh on a two year deal. He had been success as a starter of the Astros and a reliever. So the Braves can get themselves a quality fifth starter or a middle innings relief pitcher or multi-inning relief guy, and on a two-year deal, it's a good move for them. Then Jose Martinez is trying to build up his value, so he's going to Mexico. I don't know if anybody's going to sign a guy who can't feel this position and has been a horrible hitter recently and can't hit. Astros, unfortunately, Lance McCullough is going to start the year in the DL. That is their best pitcher because Verlander is coming off Tommy John surgery. Rangers picked up Brad Miller on a major league deal, and Charlie Culberson re-signed on a minor league deal. Those are two great utility players if you're trying to make the playoffs, or they can start for a stretch of the time if you're a team going nowhere. Brad Miller is definitely a good move for them. As we mentioned in the first video, the Yankees moves Rizzo's officially for two years. Sorry, Cubs fan. Sorry, Cubs fans. Kyle Schwarber signed a four-year deal with the Phillies to be their DH, which is a good move so he can bat between Romuto and Harper. He's definitely not going to play the outfield, even though there's no guarantee who's going to play left field for the Phillies, but you got to keep him at DH. He can't field. Pirates re-signed Chase DeYoung to my league deal again. He will pitch for the Pirates this year, and they can flip him. Fortunately for the Red Sox, Chris Sale has a stress fracture in his rib cage. So with Rodriguez gone, that doesn't really help that he's going to miss time due to injury. Speaking of the Cubs, they signed this Saya, Saya Suzuki to a five-year deal. Jason Hayward stuck there for two more years. They picked up Clint Frazier. They have Ian Happ. They got some you know, journeyman first baseman in Schwindel and Wisdom. So I feel like Suzuki will probably take it bats in left field until Hayward's gone. So it looks like Hap could be the DH maybe, I don't know, but I don't think Suzuki can play center field. So they're going all in on this because they're really trying there. So that's a good move. We mentioned Chapman going to the Blue Jays. That That's an interesting shaking up trade. Tigers have signed Chapman to a two-year deal and Willie Peralta to a Miley deal. Again, Chapman is a good relief pitcher. If you're not, the Tigers are a playoff team. They flip them. Willie Peralta can start a relief for them, and again, they can flip him. Phillies DFA Yoan Lopez. And the D-backs signed Keon Kella to a minor league deal. The thing about Kella is he got hurt last year and was out for the year. But when he does come back, him on the Diamondbacks with Ian Kennedy, even the Diamondbacks are on a playoff team, they can be like, hey, look, we got veteran guys. Let's trade them. Then the Dodgers re-signed Shane Green to a minor league deal like they did with Jimmy Nelson. And again, 
Greeny used to be a successful closer for multiple teams. That just boosts the Dodgers' AAA roster with relievers that they can call up when they need to at that point. Braves re-signed Andrew Rosario with a DH. Him and Adam Duvall, one of them can DH, so Acuna can play right field. They play Acuna in center field again, I don't get that. That's why I like the Alec Dickerson signing, because he's a natural-born center fielder. He can play any of the outfield spots, and you can plug him in until Acuna comes back. He's a good role player to have on your team. Cubs picked up Stephen Brault. Again, Cubs signing these fifth starters, setup men, swing guys, utility guys. They're just trying that they did think that there's a good chance that with the extended playoffs that they could become a playoff team. And if they're not, you could always trade Stephen Brault to a team that needs a fifth starter. Red Sox signed Dan Adebayo to a two-year deal, a minor league deal, missing time with injuries, but when healthy, been pretty successful. So with the moves of Diekman and Strom, they're just trying to rebuild that bullpen, which is a very good idea. Sheldon Noose, he has gone to the A's, and we mentioned with the A's getting Kevin Smith in that Chapman trade in the first video. They got a wide open infield, so there's definitely a spot for them. We mentioned Mike Miner going to the Reds. He'll play Sonny Gray as a major leaguer in rotation, but again, the Reds could always flip him. You never know, and Amir Garrett doesn't help out the Royals. The Royals are not going anywhere. Mariners signed Chance Cisco to mind the deal. Speaking of Orioles player, Orioles never gave him a chance, and the Mariners not sure what they're doing at catcher. So he's a good chance to at least be a backup for the Mariners. Another guy the Sox could have signed. Joe Ross has officially been placed in the 60-day DL, which is why the Nationals picked up both Sanchez's and Ross Ramirez, because they need some pitching there. Mets re-signed Jason Shreve to a minor league deal, brought him back. Again, he and Montgomery will be good organizational depth. Cubs, Robertson, we mentioned that. The Reds signed Donovan Solano. That's going to be good. They don't know what they're doing at shortstop. But again, Solano's a useful utility guy. And Buck Farmer, the former Tigers relief pitcher, could have helped the Reds out, and they could always flip him. grinky has gone back to the Royals. He's not retiring, but a one-year deal for a team that just traded Mike Miner and last year traded Danny Duffy and Jacob Junis is gone. I'm just like, who? Zinke's like the, Grinke's like the only good starting pitcher on their team. And with them not being a playoff team, he would definitely be a trade candidate to go somewhere else. As I mentioned, Culberson going to the Rangers. Tyler Thornburg's going to the Braves. And Kirby Yates has been put on the 60-day DL. When Kirby Yates pitches for the Braves this year, they'll get another veteran closer. And Tyler Thornburg's healthy. The Braves get another good reliever for defending their title. Angel signed Matt Duffy, super utility guy. I'm not worried he's going to play because they have Rendon and they have... Fletcher, but then that means Griffin Canning's officially in the 6th ADL. Pirates picked up Adonis Messina, Medina, again, organizational depth. Rangers signed Greg Holland. They just keep signing all these veteran players that he can definitely make the Rangers bullpen out of spring training, and if they don't make the playoffs, he could be flipped. The Rockies, we mentioned they signed Iglesias Scott Shevler. Well, they picked up Chris Bryant, a seven-year deal. I don't know if they're going to they're gonna move Ryan McMahon, who won a gold glove last year, or at least nominated for one, and he has been proven an offensive hitter, and then they got Josh Fuente. Both of them are third basemen, but some have, well, some have played first, some have played second, and they got C.J. Crone. So C.J. Crone can D.H. as fine and dandy. But if you're going to move McMahon, who just won like a gold glove and one of the best defensive third basemen, for Chris Bryant, I don't really get that move. And you could probably make Chris Bryant your first baseman because that would make him stay the most healthy. Crone will D.H., and Fuentes becomes the second baseman or a backup, whoop de doo or you could put Chris Bryant in left field. They got a lot of options. They could all 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 go out in DH and they can play left field, they can play first base. I don't like the, the moving of McMahon and Chris Bryant just got all the money. He could have stayed with the Giants. He could have gone to plenty of teams that are playoff caliber, but no. Let's go to the Rockies who are probably gonna finish in last place. That's where I don't understand it. it the seven year deal is all about the money for Chris Bryant. Giants have signed Jock Peterson. He will slide into the Alec Dickerson role where he could play all three outfield spots because there won't be any more Darren Ruff in the outfield and some infielders because they can just say, okay, Jock, we can ask you to play one of the three outfield spots and we know you can hit and rotate at DH. Cubs picked up Daniel Norris, another guy. He was been a relief pitcher recently for the Tigers and Brewers, but he's a starting pitcher by trade. So the Cubs could always say, you could be a swing guy, you could be bullpen depth. That's a good move there. A's have signed Billy McKinney to a minor league deal again. They, they've let go of everybody. So McKinney is a very good chance of A, making the A's roster, and B, finally, this dude has been on the Cubs, the Yankees, the A's, the Dodgers. He's been traded around a thousand times. He can maybe get a full season of it back, and we can actually see what he's supposed to be because I don't think he's a bust if you never actually give him an opportunity. A bust is you try the guy, and he's just horrible from day one. That's where I'm just like, I don't really know. And speaking of the Orioles, where I mentioned, you know, they let catchers go, they signed Chirinos. Adley Rushman, their number one prospect, the best in baseball, their catcher, 
he has a tricep injury, which is good news for the Orioles because then they can wait to start him and do the whole manipulation and service clock. Ryan Lamar is not a minor deal with the Yankees. Him and LaCastro will be good organizational depth because the Yankees don't stay healthy in the outfield. Angel signed Keen Wong to minor league deal again. Not sure about their infield or their outfield, so he's good organizational depth. Orioles re-signed Chris Ellis to minor league deal. There's a good chance that he pitches in their team and they flip him. Pirates signed Austin Bryce, a veteran pitcher, so he could also be flipped at the deadline. Angels picked up Archie Bradley. They got Lorenz in it. They signed all these other guys. Archie Bradley and Iglesias will be a good one-two punch in the bullpen. So they're really beefing up their bullpen. Cardinals signed Corey Dickerson. They have a set outfield. Lars Newbar could potentially be the DH, but Corey Dickerson can get an opportunity to DH every day. Carlson are never going to be stupid enough to play him in center field because Carlson and Bader and Tyler O'Neill would be the first three guys that you'd play in center field over this guy because the Blue Jays were stupid. And when Dickerson's healthy, he's a 20-plus home run guy, 80 RBI guy. So that's a good move by the Cardinals, taking advantage of the DH in the National League. Mets signed Travis Janikowski to a minor league deal again. Brandon Nimmo can't stay healthy. They got two first basemen, potentially two infielders in the outfield. Janikowski could be a useful backup outfielder who can play all the three spots and be useful for them. That's good minor league signing. Rays picked up Jason Adams. Again, journeyman reliever. Oh, They always know what to do with relief pitchers, but Tyler Glasnow, their best pitcher, is starting the year in the 6th day DL. That's not a, a good sign there. Giants, as we mentioned, they Carl Rodon, and they signed Carlos Martinez, and they have Alex Wood still, and they signed Alex Cobb. Well, they just picked up Matt Boyd. Matt Boyd's had a few down years recently, but he was really good for the Tigers. Like, the Tigers just gave up on him. He's not old. He's just some down years. The Giants are really trying to overcome the Dodgers and actually go further in the playoffs. And they think if Rodon's healthy, Alex Cobb is in the back of the rotation. Alex Wood is healthy. And you got Matt Boyd, and you got Carlos Martinez. That could actually help you out there. And that's good moves there. Cubs picked up Jonathan VR. Well, he's a super useful utility guy. They don't really have a guaranteed set infield as well. Like the only set thing for the Cubs is that they, they have Jason Hayward and they got the Suzuki guy who's who's going to play in the outfield. And they got Ian Happ and they got Wilson Ramos behind the excuse me. Wilson Contreras behind the plate. So that is where you're just like, okay, the Cubs basically don't have anything set. No offense to Nick Madrigal, no offense to Wisdom or David Bodie, and eh, Nico Horner's utility. That's where you're just like, okay. So this move is that Iglesias is going to have an, excuse me, VR is going to have an opportunity to play not just shorts off for the Cubs, but he can play second base, he can play third base, he can play all over the field, and if they don't go anywhere, they can obviously flip him. Robert Gazelma and Adrian Sampson also sign up by the Cubs. gazelman has been a starting pitcher and a reliever for the Mets. And Adrian Sampson has been on the block. So the Cubs get a swing guy and a veteran relief pitcher. Again, organizational depth. Freddie Freeman officially signed a six-year deal with the Dodgers. And I'm upset about this because that just means Cody Bellinger is not just going to stay in the outfield. He's going to stay in center field. The dude is a walking injury right now because he's not even an outfielder by trade. The whole thing I had in the DH was I was like, aha, Max Muncy. Man who's out of position. Justin Turner getting up there in eight. One of those guys can DH. Leaves first base wide open for Cody Bellinger. Nope. They're going to play Cody Bellinger in center field. And Freddie Freeman's going to play first base. And they're seeing these projected things of AJ Pollock DHing. No. What are you doing? If you want to keep Bellinger in the outfield, have him play left field. I don't know what they're doing there, but with their alignment. But getting Freddie Freeman for six years, that's a lot of years for a guy in his 30s already. He's going to go into decline, but he's a two-way player. He just came off a World Series. That's good for them in the short term. And the National DFA, John Romero, with all the moves they made, Twins picked up Jose Godi after the Giants did. Because, again, they traded away a catcher to the Rangers in Garver, and they traded the other catcher to the Yankees. So they're low on catching depth. Diego Hormon, unfortunately for the Yankees, can start the year in the sixth ADL. That's not good for their rotation. Colin Moran, which we mentioned with the Vogelback going to the Pirates, he's officially going to the Reds. Now, I don't get the Reds. They trade away the third baseman, Suarez, and their left fielder, D.H. Winker, and Castiano opts out. Okay, so Moustakis moves to third base, and Votto stays at first base. But you go on, I'm like, okay, who's going to D.H. for this team? Well, they go on inside Colin Moran to D.H. There are plenty of teams that could have used Colin Moran at first base, and plenty of teams could have at third base. That's what his position is. But, hey, the Reds, like, we need to solidify the fact that we don't have Suarez and we don't have Winker and we don't have Castellanos. So offensively, I get that move. It's just they're not the team that was like, oh, my God, they need to get a, 
a corner infielder to be their DH. And I don't really get that. Braves avoid arbitration with Soropa. Makes sense. Brad Week, unfortunately, for the Cubs after the injury to Alizé. This guy's in the 68 deals, and they're down a couple of pitchers, which is why they're signing all of these dudes to minor league deals. Okay? Mets sign Tizu Leland to minor league deal or additional debt utility guy. Cubs also signed Michael Givens. That dude was one of the best set of men for the Orioles. Kind of struggled the last few years, but again, they're bullpen a Robertson and him. Oh my God, this is getting better and better, man. This, they, they can't, they can't. The Cubs are getting better there. Angels signed Cesar Valdez. I feel he's a good chance of pitching their team. Dodgers kept Danny Duffy after they already said they kept McAllister. I mean, that's Cal. It's Shane Green, and they already kept Jimmy Nelson. So man, if Duffy's healthy. Maybe he can start some games for you, pitch some out of the bullpen. That's a good move. Ian Silva is going to Cleveland, give out. I mean, good organizational depth. Pirates defense, Eric Handold. Padres picked up Travis Bergen. He can definitely make the bullpen. Orioles signed Bo Taylor. Again, catching depth with, with their number one guy going to come up soon. Angels DFA, Packy Naughton. Rockies DFA, Johan Ibar. And um, Ryan Tapara signed two deal with the Angels. The Angels has picked up Bradley and Tapara. I want the White Sox to keep Tapara. For the money they spent both on Graveman and Joe Kelly, but that helps out the Angels bullpen because they get a veteran setup man there. I'm like, that's a good move. That's really good. But the Cubs man, they signed Robertson and Stephen Brault and the Suzuki guy, and you're just like, oh wow, the Cub and Chris Martin. The Cubs bullpen is gonna be better. Their pitching staff's gonna be and their team's gonna be better. Okay? World Baseball Classic officially coming back in 2023. I can't wait for that. They pushed everything back because of COVID. Judge have ruled that minor league baseball players are actual and major league employees, so that's good for the benefits going forward. Found out that unvaccinated players for the Yankees and Mets will not be able to play home games like the Kyrie Irving situation in basketball. So if I, the rumors are about Aaron Judge are true, come on, New York players, get vaccinated. You're going to hurt yourself and your team. Neil Huntington has been added to the Cleveland front office. The former GM is a good thing to help them because they're trying to get back to where they being a playoff team. They've announced that all major league coaches need to be vaccinated for spring training. That should make sense. If the coaching staff is vaccinated, they will convince the players to. Tatis is out for three months with a fractured wrist due to like falling off his motorcycle multiple times. What I don't understand is how in a contract they allow him to ride motorcycles. I know with the lockout they weren't communicating, but this dude is a walking injury, signed a 10 to 15 year deal. He's there, like a, he's there for 10 plus years. They're stuck with him. His injury, him not being the player he's supposed to be, that's on them. The White Sox missed out on having this talent, but man, this dude's just reckless. Unrecklessness is that Pete Alonso was driving in Florida spring training and a car T-boned him through after running through a red light. His car flipped over three times, kicked out the windshield with his feet, and he's totally fine. I'm glad he's built. Big guy, I'm glad he's okay. That's a positive news. And Peacock, they announced originally that they're going to do like the games in the weekday. Nope. They're going to do Sunday morning games at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time and in the afternoon. That's weird times, but they just want to be the exclusive person. And not that you can't watch it with your MLB.TV or your regional network. is that they'll be the only game on, so they won't be competing with anything else. So that's just weird right there what they're doing there. Okay? And then we get to some sad news here. Yankees pitcher Rolf Terry passed away. At the age of 86, he finished with 1,000 strikeouts and a winning record of 107.99 and 3.62 ERA. He pitched for the Yankees, the A's, the Indians, and the Mets. Pitched for the Yankees and the A's multiple times. Was a two-time All-Star, but both those were the same year in 62. Was on the Yankees team that won the World Series in 61 and 62. And was the World Series MVP in 62 after leading the AL. So, man, 62 when he was a two-time All-Star, led the league in wins, won the World Series, and was World Series MVP after winning the World Series in 61. That's a pretty good career for him. Rest in peace to Ralph Terry. We also lost Pete Ward, the former Sox player, who was one of my dad's favorite players growing up, who started with the Orioles and finished his career with the Yankees and went to coaching afterwards. He's in Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. He finished with 98 career home runs and 427 RBIs. He passed away to 84. Rest in peace to Pete Ward and Ralph Terry. Thanks for listening to part two of week 19 of the MLB offseason hostile edition from the 2021 season to getting the 22-2 and two season. Baseball's back. Sorry for talking fast. There was just every single trade, major league signing, minor league signing. Just so much is happening. Just check out On the Redder Entertain blog to see every single move that's happened. Check out MLBTradeRumors.com. That's a good source. You can always get my videos on On the Radar. Thanks for listening. See you guys next time.